and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we've got several practice problems that talk about congruence and proportion in similar triangles. So let's get started. We've got three of them to work on. All right, the first is given angle ACB is a right angle, CD is an altitude, prove CD squared is equal to AD times DB. All right, so let's mark up this diagram. Um, I know that CD is, CDA is a right angle. I know that ACB is a right angle. All right, so in this case, I know that angle A is going to be congruent to itself. I also know that angle A plus angle, angle A, plus angle ACD is equal to 90 degrees, right? So A and ACD are going to be complementary angles. I also know that angle ACD and BCD are going to be complementary angles as well, because I know that ACB is a right angle. So I can say that angle BCD plus angle ACD also equal 90 degrees. So I can say that because I have two angles that are complementary to the same angle, they are congruent. So I know that angle A is going to be congruent to angle B, C, D. So I'm going to write angle A here and then B, C, D. Those two angles are going to be congruent. Now I have two triangles that are going to be similar. I have angles A, C, D and, which is going to be similar to uh, CDB by the angle-angle uh, similarity theorem. So let's write that out. Okay, so triangle ADC is similar to triangle CDB. So A, the angles that are congruent, uh, D, the right angle, C is congruent to C, this angle here that's congruent with angle A, D, the right angle, and B. So if I write that, if I use my, uh, the relationship between the side lengths, I can rewrite this as a proportion. And I can say that AD over CD is going to be equal to CD over DB. Now I'm going to use my means extremes product theorem, which says that CD squared is equal to AD times db. So now I've just proven that cd squared is equal to ad times db. So I'm going to put up the two column proof and I'm not going to walk through it but I'll leave it up for a second. So if you want to read through it and copy it down you can go ahead and do that. Okay, moving on to the next problem, EF number 23, EF GK is a parallelogram, MJ is 4, JH is 5, we're going to find EM and to find out what X is here. Well, I have a parallelogram and we have a transversal here in EH. Um, so let's mark it, we have EFM, which is going to be congruent to KJM, and we also know that these two vertical angles are going to be congruent. So I know that EMF, triangle EMF, is going to be similar to triangle JMK by the AA similarity theorem. So if I were to rewrite this, I could say that EM over JM is going to be equal to MF over MK. Okay, now I also have another pair of triangles that are going to be similar using the fact that I have alternate interior angles cut by a transversal of two parallel lines. I can figure out, and also my vertical angles theorem, I can figure out that EKM is going to be congruent to KFH, and I have my vertical angles EMK congruent to FMH. 
So now I have triangles K, M, E, similar to triangle F, M, H. And that's again by the A, A postulate. So I can say now that uh, M, F, over MK is going to be equal to MH over ME or EM. So if I have MF over MK equal to MH over EM and if I have MF over MK equal to EM over JM then I know that MH by substitution over EM is going to be equal to EM over JM. Well, I've defined EM as X, so I can rewrite this, and I know that MH is 9, and I know that JM here is 4, so I can rewrite the equation as MH, which is 9, over X, is equal to x em over jm which is going to be 5. So now I have <clears throat> excuse me is 9 I'm sorry jm is going to be 4. So let me erase this jm is 4. So now I have x squared is equal using my means extremes product theorem x squared is equal to 36 so x in this case is going to be 6. I should say x is equal to plus or minus 6, but I know that the value of x as a distance cannot be a negative value. So x is equal to 6. Okay, on to the final problem. All right, number 24. When an object is placed on a ramp, part of its weight, w, a downward force, is directed along the ramp as a sliding force, f. In physics, these forces are represented by vectors with lengths proportional to W and F. So I've written the vectors F here. So it's a force sliding down the ramp. And then W here, it's the weight of the, uh, uh, whatever the object is, this box, that's moving downward. So I have the force F, uh, which is sliding along the ramp, BA, and then the weight of the object moving into the earth as gravity affects it. So we want to find first the angle between the vectors, and then if w is equal to 50, we need to find out what f is. All right, so first we see um, we've got a right angle here in fd, uh, and we have a right angle here in c. We know that angle a is 23 degrees. So if angle a is 23 degrees, that makes angle b 67 degrees, if I'm not mistaken. If angle b is 67 degrees, then I know that angle FDE is 67 degrees because I have two parallel lines, ED and BC. I have the downward force of ED directed right into the earth, so it's going to be parallel to the perpendicular line BC and AC. So I know that this angle here, this small angle here, is going to be 67 degrees. I have a right angle here in uh, FD, so this is also the force directed into uh, the ramp, and F, E, F is parallel to A, B, so this right angle here, E, F, D, matches up with this angle here, C. So I have what looks like uh, two similar triangles in B, C, A, so let's just write these here, triangle B, C, A, B, C, A is going to be similar to triangle DFE. And I know that FDE, this is the angle between the two vectors, uh, is going to be 23 degrees. All right, so the angle between F and E, I know that angle FDE is going to be 67 degrees, so FED will be 23 degrees. Now I know that triangle BCA is similar to DFE, and so that means that I have BA uh, 
over DE, which is going to be equal to BC over DF. Okay, well I know that BA is going to be 10, and uh, I know that BC is going to be 4. So now I have to figure out what DE and also uh, DE and also what BC are. Well, if WDE is going to be 50, then I can rewrite this as 50 here. And then all I need to do is figure out what X is. Well, I use my means extremes product theorem and I figure out that 10X is equal to 200. So X is going to have to be equal to 20. So in this case, F is 20 when W is 50. So I just want to clarify one other point. I think that the graph or the explanation, the drawing doesn't exactly get to the angle in question. So let's redraw this here. What I wanted to define as angle 67 was this angle right here. I have this line here, I have two parallel lines, E and D. ED is parallel to BC. And uh, I know that I have a transversal AB. I know that the corresponding angles are congruent, 67 here. So this angle here is going to be 67 degrees. It's not this angle here. This angle here is going to end up being 23 degrees. Then I have two parallel lines, an EF and AB, cut by a transversal ED. So the angle FED is going to end up being 67 degrees as well. So FED, I have two corresponding angles, this angle here at 67 degrees, then uh, DEF also at 67 degrees. So the angle between the two vectors is not 23 degrees, it's 67 degrees. This angle here, D, is equal to 23 degrees, and angle F is going to be the right angle at 90 degrees.